In Erlang and Elixir, the way you communicate between processes is very simple. You use two operations, send and receive. So send, send is a very simple operation. In Erlang, it looks like this. In Elixir, it looks like that. Um, in Erlang, it's destination program, uh, destination process, exclamation point, and then um, the message. In Elixir, it's send destination message but they basically but they do the same thing and that is they send the message to the receiving process now you may use a PID sometimes you'll use an atom if it's a named process but it's basically the same idea and the PID can be local it can be on a different node it doesn't matter now some things you have to know first of all send always succeeds if the process you're sending to is not there it'll still succeed. And you may wonder about that, but the answer is it, ha it sort of has to be that way because what if the process, you know, if you send it now and the process is alive, but one time it gets there, the process gets to it in its mailbox, it's died. Um, so send always succeeds. If you'd like to build a validation on top of it, you can do that with references and other things and basically accept a message back and with timeouts. Uh, gen servers do this and other data structures but the basic send always succeeds. That's important. Okay, so once you've sent a message, something else has to receive it. You can, of course, send a message to yourself, uh, although it's not particularly useful. Each process in Erlang has a mailbox. So when you send a message, it lands in the destination process's mailbox. Now, when the process, the, the destination process is ready to get messages out of its mailbox, it uses the receive clause, looks like that in Erlang and that in Elixir. And receive pattern matches. So the nice thing is receive, you can tell receive to just take any message, but you can also tell it only take messages of a certain shape. Now this is great. If you ever look at a parallel map implementation like this one here, you'll see that it spawns a new process for every in the map and then brings the data together. It's a very simple map reduce kind of operation. Now, if you didn't have the pattern matching receive, what would happen is the data would come back in arbitrary order. The given n processes, there are roughly two to the n possible orderings at which they could all run. You run it 100 times, you get 100 different orderings. But what you can do is you can say, okay, we know that we want to just create a, using the process identifier to pattern match, you can say, I only care about the first messages from the first process. Um, and it will have to, of course, send back its process ID um, with its message. And then you can say, I can only care about the ones from the second one, and so on and down the line. So suddenly, you've taken two to the n possible orderings and reduced them to one, all through the magic of selective receive. So that is send and receive. If you liked this video, please subscribe, like and subscribe below. Uh, also, if you'd be so kind as to share it on Twitter, I'd be very appreciative. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Zeke Hessen, and I have a mailing list you can subscribe below.